don't forget, to hear the full-length interview, head over to the website or iTunes and subscribe to the B-Ball Breakdown podcast. Hey, sports fans. Coach Nick here, and welcome to the B-Ball Breakdown podcast. I'm excited to have Jared Zwirling on from Bleacher Report. Uh, he's been doing some awesome stuff uh, recently, and we wanted to talk a little bit about it. So, Jared, uh, talk to me. You're getting prepped for All-Star Game weekend these days? Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. On and off the court, it's going to be a crazy week. Not to mention it's the first time it's a five-day All-Star Week. Not to mention it's also Fashion Week here in New York City. So a lot of parties, a lot of events. Uh, first time All-Stars trying to capitalize uh, off the court branding uh, uh, business portfolio-wise. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited. So let's talk a little bit about Scott Brooks. You had an awesome article where you got to sit down with him, which yeah. I think is kind of a rare thing. doesn't sound like he likes to do one-on-one so much. Uh, you know, we got a lot of the, you know information from your article, but I wonder, are there things that maybe uh, didn't get put in there, got edited out, that maybe people would want to hear about from uh, from your sit down? Uh, you know, one funny anecdote, and I'm sure this relates to a lot of players and coaches that have this kind of schedule. But he was telling me sometimes he's on the road and he wakes up and he forgets what he forgets what city he's in. Sometimes he'll leave the hotel for breakfast for coffee. He'll go back to his. Uh, room or, or floor he'll forget what floor he's on what room he's in he has to go back down to the check-in and say uh, hi i'm scott brooks he has to show his id that he actually is a head coach for the oklahoma city thunder so funny stories like that just with the travel schedule um you know i think one thing just about his connection to okc you know he said when he first got there to okc he would go up to somebody and say you know how do i get to home depot or how do i get to this restaurant literally people would actually drive him show him where to go not just tell him but actually show him on the road and, and drive him there he said the city's been very welcoming to him uh, when we had lunch that day at a restaurant, a, a pizza joint, this fan came over and literally dropped the receipt for our meal with the note on the back saying, thank you for being inspiration to us Oklahomans. So, you know, the connection he has to the city is very, is very close-knit there. You know, I think a lot of the Q&A was, was pretty much the, the bulk of it. Um, you know, some of it was just outside excerpts, just us talking casually. But, you know, I think the big question I have for him is just kind of the situation they're dealing with right now, the pressure to make the playoffs – uh, their lack of offensive creativity, how he's kind of maneuvering that. And he really defended himself. He said, you know, we've been really doing well offensively. We're in the top three, four, and five the last few years. And he said we've had a lot of issues with injuries and things like that. But the biggest thing that he's brought to that team is, I think, the personal touch, really getting the guys to be a good unit, very very chemistry-based-wise. So on the court, they're not producing yet, but maybe that will change in the next couple of weeks. And uh, you, you did something that I'm extremely jealous of, which was actually sit down with a guy. Now, did you have like videotape with you? And were you looking at, at game footage with him and talking about it? Yeah, my big thing with players, I did this with Rajon Rondo about a month ago in Boston. What I do is I edit my own tape. I watch a lot of game time on my iPad. And, I, and I, what I do is, you know, sometimes I'm a little ghetto style with it just because I like to do things quickly. I don't like to wait sometimes. I actually will record it on my iPhone uh, and just create little clips out of it and then compile it into a video. I have to give away too, too many of my secrets, but basically I, I, I compile uh, a film session. I, I, I create a, a uh, sort of a, a mock film session with, with players. And, uh, you know, with Tony Allen, I, I was able to do that. And, you know, we had about an hour and a half. I saw him work out and we did a, a mock sec- uh, a film session, like I said. And it was fantastic. You know, I, it's funny, coming into Memphis, um, I was told by a few people that, you know, Tony could be a little reserved and he doesn't want to share too many of his secrets. But immediately we had a connection. You know, we were... He was uh, in the weight room. He was listening to some Southern hip hop, and I like hip hop, so we connect, connect to some of the artists that he was listening to. And I feel like with a lot of athletes, if you can connect with them and with their music and their fashion, and that's why some coaches like Scott Brooks, some of the younger coaches, do well in the league now. Derek Fisher, Steve Kerr, is that they are so young that they can relate to the player culture today, and that, that's very, very important. It goes very underrated, but with hip hop, with fashion, with style, you know, social media, you know, coaches. If they're engaged in that, they, they go, it goes a long way. Anyways, so we did that, and it was a fantastic time with Tony Allen. Wow, yeah. I mean, I talk with, I talk with players all the time about Run DMC and Cool Modi, and uh, that goes over really well. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, to them, Ice-T is just some guy on, uh, on TV, I guess, uh, unfortunately for me. But uh, I, I hear you. There is certainly a way to connect there, and it sounded fascinating because, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm stealing your idea because I've had the idea, and I've been trying to prep it for a while now, is to do, you know, sort of the, the John Gruden style thing where he does with the football players and the quarterbacks, yep. where we do that and we literally break down tape. Because, yeah, there's nothing more fascinating to hear a guy like Tony Allen. Well, why did you cut him off at that angle, right? And then he'll say, well, because I know he's a lefty. He likes to go into the middle or something like that. Yep. Uh, that stuff's fascinating to me, and that's a real treat. Uh, you know, what else did you find out about uh, the way the team dynamic works and whether you think they're going to make it? Oh, the Grizzlies? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they to me, they don't have the best record in the West or the league, but they to, they, to me are the best team to win a championship. You know, you go back to last year when they almost beat the Thunder in that se- that seven game series, and just the way that they've transformed and evolved in the last five six years since. Mike Conley got there, and then Marcus Sol developed, and Tony Allen w- w- came there from from Boston, and now getting Jeff Green and their role players. I mean, to me, you know, you look how they played the last couple of years. They're a little bit more of a slower paced team through Zach uh, Randolph and Marcus Sol, and they still have that great foundation. To me, they're the best four or five in the league right now. Then you add a faster pace offense a little bit with Jeff Green and Mike Conley doing what he does at point guard on both ends of the court. They've increased their scoring, their pace, and then they do it defensively. They have the inside presence, a great unit, a great city culture in Memphis. I mean, to me, you know, their culture is the grindhouse. And Tony Allen in 2011 coined the uh, the phrase all heart, grit, grind, you know, when he had 27 points to five steals over a win uh, against the Thunder. And that's the culture there. To me, they're the best suited to, to win playoff basketball, you know. So I, I like what they do on both ends of the court, and they're my favorite. Speaking of envy, though, I know I've, I've already envied you as far as the Tony Allen sit-down and going through footage with other players. Uh, but it, it goes to another level when you talk about uh, having lunch with Michael Jordan. And I know it wasn't one-on-one, but it sounded like you had a real, uh, you know, uh, audience with him. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about that. What was that like? I suspect a lot of people might wonder, yeah. you know, what it's like to sort of be in a room with him and, and interact. Yeah, you know, definitely. It was uh, one of the best moments of my life, just not in my career, but just overall in life. You know, I remember the Be Like, be like Mike commercials and all that stuff and just idolizing him. You know, first of all, he's so casual, you know, not really a suit wearing guy now. You know, he wears the jumpsuit and I talked to uh, employees around the uh, around the arena and some of his longtime business guys. He's a different guy now. You know, he wears these weird looking baseball caps and, you know, he looks like a, you know, a 50 year old, you know, father of three, you know, basically, which which he is. Yeah, uh, actually, I think he has uh, five now. He has a twins and three kids from his previous marriage. So father of five. There you go. And, you know, he lives three blocks from the arena in a condominium penthouse. And he literally walks to work some days. Like I said, we're in the jumpsuit, very casual life. And, you know, I, I think for him, he's out of the spotlight now. And But he's he's so invested with that team. In fact, if you look at how they rebuilt and rebranded the, the, the Bobcats of the Hornets, he was involved almost day to day with from from the arena lights to the design of the court. Jordan Brand was the creative firm for that, so they helped out with a lot of the designs and the creativity. Even down to the carpeting, he wanted certain uh, wall structures and designs changed, so he was very day-to-day. And I talked to MJ and his business team. You know, MJ from his Nike and Jordan Brand days, he became basically a creative consultant. He understood color schemes and what will attract fans, so he's very day-to-day there. Uh, you know, I think off the court now, he's not really playing basketball. He's skiing now. He actually has a home in Park City, Utah, so he's become quite a skier. In his later years, he's become a dad. He has dinners at his apartment. He invites the old friends over for cigar and dinners. You know, he's just you know just living a casual life. He's got he's still got his private jet, traveling the world. But uh, I think from an internal standpoint, he's very day to day. And you know, when he walks around the arena, he wants to know what people's names are. He has casual conversation with people. He's not one of those owners that just isn't there, not in touch with reality. Um, and also interesting too, he actually has hired his family. You know, his brother James, uh, he used to work in the military is a part of the it, uh, leads all the arena operations and his daughter Jasmine is a basketball coordinator she actually coordinates with NBA scouts and uh, agents to orchestrate draft pre-draft workouts so it's interesting you know how his family is also working for him too but really yeah it was a fa- fascinating time Nick terrific all right well make sure to follow him on Twitter get their bleach report and check him out and uh, don't forget sports fans at b-ball breakdown we're not a channel we're a conversation you in you in Jared I'm I'm all the way in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, to hear the full-length interview, head over to the website or iTunes and subscribe to the B-Ball Breakdown podcast.